Well, good morning. Good morning, good morning. It is good to see you. Welcome to Christ Memorial on this Palm Sunday as we move into Holy Week. It is good to see you all here, as well as those of you joining us online. I want to say welcome to anybody who is joining us perhaps for the first time. It is so good for you to be able to be here or whether online as well. Um, it is great to be able to be part of this community. As we move into Holy League, we have a number of worship services coming up as we kind of go through that story of Holy Week that happened some 2,000 years ago. Uh, on Thursday, we have our Maundy Thursday service that's at 7 o'clock p.m. Good Friday, that'll be at 7 o'clock p.m. as well. And then on Easter morning, we have our, our normal service times, 8.15 and 10.45, with that 8.15 being more the traditional service, which you're at now, and then our 10.45 is the more modern contemporary service. We're excited to kick things off today with Palm Sunday. Uh, we have our choir singing, so we're really excited about that. There are also some things happening in the community. Uh, on April 3rd, which is this Saturday, Center Ministries, which is the building right over here that houses Family Point, uh, they're having an Easter egg hunt. So you, the whole community is welcome to join in that. They're still looking for some volunteers. So if you're looking to help out with that, um, you can contact them over there. I think there's information in your, your bulletin. Um, in addition, there is on April 10th, there's going to be a little farmer's market put on by Family Point uh, in the shared parking lot between us and St. Thomas. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to that. They're also still open to vendors. So if you know somebody who's looking to sell something that they have going on, um, you can contact them. But when it comes to Easter morning, we're not just just doing worship. We have some other things happening on campus. So I'm going to invite Pastor Marino up here to share a little bit about the Easter breakfast that's happening that morning, as well as we also have an Easter egg hunt during that time. But if you could share about that Easter breakfast. Howdy. Howdy. Uh, yeah, so we're going to be doing uh, Easter breakfast in between uh, services this year. Uh, so in getting set up for that, uh, we are going to be uh, getting as many different people volunteering as possible. Uh, our youth will be helping to serve uh, that morning, so we're really glad to be getting them to sign up for that. Now, this is my first year to help to run point on this, so if you have done Easter breakfast in the past, come find me. Help! Okay, so uh, let me know because uh, we need to not only figure out who's bringing different parts of the food, but also uh, uh, plates, silverware, juice, napkins, things like that, um, aspirin for me. So uh, with that, uh, I'll be uh, uh, available in the narthex uh, in between services, and also you'll see me during class, let me know. Or if you did not get a chance to be here today, and you're going to be here next week, lcmspastor at gmail.com. That's me, lcmspastor at gmail.com. I got that email address during beta. So, uh, also with the Easter egg hunt, who's running the Easter egg hunt? I believe Sue is kind of uh, oh, yeah. grabbing, grabbing point on that. Uh, oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, 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 she seems really excited about it. Okay, good. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. Awesome. And by the way, uh, great to see the choir. Hello. Yeah. Hey. So, please let me know. Uh, we'd really like to get some uh, volunteers to help out with that and bring some food. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Pastor Marino. Uh, as we begin worship today, I just want to say, so you'll be using the hymnal there that's back in the pew in front of you. They're no longer on the rack in the back. If you're unfamiliar with how to work through a hymnal, that's all right. We have the service printed out for you in the back. With that being said, uh, we are beginning with hymn number 442, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. Let's go ahead and stand for our opening hymn. Hymn number 442, All Glory, Laud, and Honor.
we call upon the presence of our God in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pause for a moment of silent confession, reflection, and prayer. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As an ordained servant of Christ, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We now join together in reading Psalm 118, beginning with verse 19 through verse 29. That's Psalm 118, verse 19 through 29, which you can find in the front of your pew. And just as a recap, since I shared it last week, Psalm 118, the middlemost chapter in the Bible. 117 shortest, 119 the longest. Psalm 118, beginning at verse 19. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let, Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience and be made partakers of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading for today is from the book of Zechariah, chapter 9, verses 9 through 12. 
and can be found on page 797 in your pew Bible. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a coal, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea, and from river, the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to you, your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore you double. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11, and can be found on page 980 of your pew Bible. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Glory to God, Hosanna in the highest. Glory to God, this jubilant day. Glory to God, Hosanna in the highest, and to the mighty King, let every nation sing praise. Thank you very much to the choir. Please stand to honor the words of the Holy Gospel. <clears throat> the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it was written, 
Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to, see, to meet him was that they had heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, you see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the gospel of the Lord. We now profess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. As we continue now in worship with Sermon Hymn 443, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. That is hymn number 443, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. <laughs> Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, I want to welcome anybody watching online. Be sure if you hear something in this sermon uh, that speaks to you or speaks to somebody that you know, be sure to share that with them. Uh, that's our modern form of evangelism. Today's message is going to be based largely on that gospel story of the original Palm Sunday, the triumphal entry. If you were here last week, last week I talked about perspective and how important perspective is in our lives, how perspective in many ways, being able to look from a different point of view and as well as make an emotional connection with that different point of view, that would really go a long way in our modern culture when it comes to understanding how other people may experience the world and the struggles that they may experience. We live in a very divided culture. 
and to be able to empathize with the other side will strongly help us be more united, which is ultimately the goal of the church. But perspective also helps when it comes to Holy Week, when it comes to stories within Scripture, because it can be very easy to hear the same stories over and over again. Those who have been in church their entire lives, you, you hear the story of the triumphal entry and say, yeah, I, he did the whole donkey thing and the palms waving and the Hosanna. And the, like, it's easy to just kind of gloss over it or even to take it and treat it just as symbolism or a metaphor. Well, okay, what can I learn from this story? But it's important to remember perspective that these were real living, breathing people with emotions, with life circumstances, with personalities, with, with rationale behind what they were doing. They, as though he waved those palm branches, probably struggle with the fact that the palms have little spikes on them because they're real people. And we don't often think about that. And so as we go through this story of perspective and looking at the different perspective, I challenge you to put yourself in the shoes or the sandals, as it were, of the people who experienced these stories. With that said, let's start off this message with prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you today and, and thank you for the chance for us to come together, whether here or digitally, to worship you. You give us that opportunity to, to sing together the praises of you and what you have done in our lives. Lord, help us to focus our hearts and minds on you and your blessings and on your truth. Lord, I thank you for the chance to share your message. I pray that it is your message. It's not about me or from me, but instead it is all about you. I submit myself to you and I pray that all who hear this message would do the same, that your Holy Spirit would be at work in real and powerful ways. In your name, amen. As I examined the story of the triumphal entry, I got to thinking about, about what that must have felt like this great procession, this, this triumphal entry, right? This, this great moment of, of victory, or so it seemed, the, the jubilation, especially in the minds of the disciples, right? Because they've been struggling with some things up till now. And I, I actually found myself thinking about other uh, processions, parades, I guess you could say, within scripture. And one really stood out to me, and there's a lot of similarities between the triumphal entry on Palm Sunday and the end of the Exodus, which is that march through the Red Sea, right? Where, where the Israelites left behind slavery. They, after the 10 plagues, the Pharaoh was like, get, I'm done, get out of here. I don't want you anymore. And off they went and they found themselves with a sea in front of them. And of course, the Pharaoh took it all back. He took the Tuxie Baxies, and so he came pursuing them. So in front of them was a sea. Behind them was an army. And of course, they felt terror and anxiety. And for the triumphal entry, the disciples and Jesus, the followers of Jesus at this time, really hadn't had an easy go of it lately. They met opposition, it seems, in every town. The Pharisees kept popping their heads up and causing trouble. They were actually run out of a couple towns just before this. And now they find themselves at the Passover at Jerusalem, the seat of the Sanhedrin, the, the very place, kind of the, the den of all their issues. And they said, behind us are all these towns that kept trying to run us out and the Pharisees trying to chase us down. And ahead of us is the very head of that whole beast. And they found themselves in this difficult place. In our lives, often we find ourselves with an army behind us and a sea in front of us. We find ourselves in different situations where we feel that we are stuck between the proverbial rock and a hard place. Maybe you've lost your job and yet the bills keep coming in. Maybe you see a relationship that is slowly getting further and further apart and you know, you know you have to have a conversation about this, but you know that conversation probably is going to be very, very tense. Maybe it's retirement is coming and you're not quite ready yet. Maybe you're going through uh, school and it seems like you're just... God didn't part the Red Sea for you because wave after wave after wave of things keep hitting you and you're barely trying to keep your head above water. We find ourselves in these situations a lot where we're, we're going along at full speed and up ahead, we see a brick wall. 
And we're like, God, I, I trust in you. I know that you're going to work this out, but that's coming pretty quick, and I'm getting pretty nervous, God. And I got to tell you, in my life, just speaking personally, it's that moment where I'm so close that I've resigned myself to complete and utter crash. It's in the moment where I say, God, I can't do this. I don't think I can go any further. And he says, good, I'm glad you finally admitted that because I can. It's in those moments that suddenly the door opens, suddenly the sea parts, suddenly there's the opportunity for another way in. And that's what the Israelites encountered as they approached the Red Sea. That is what the disciples encountered as they approached Jerusalem. No doubt they were terrified about going there, and yet suddenly there's a procession and people are praising Jesus and they're welcoming them in and they're saying, maybe this won't be as bad as we thought. But we know what the rest of the story is. For the Israelites, right, they went through that brick wall, through that, that troublesome obstacle. They were able to pass through the Red Sea. Yes, victory. This is something for celebration. There, there's a song of Moses where, where he thanks God for seeing us through this difficult time. Well, now they're in the desert. <laughs> and the Israelites, it doesn't take long before they start grumbling. They start getting upset and saying, well, this is worse than slavery. This is worse than what we were in before. At least back then, yeah, life was terrible, but we knew where our meals were going to come from. Maybe it wasn't enough food. Maybe it was terrible food, but at least we knew where it was coming from. Now we're just wandering in the desert. This isn't much better, Moses. This isn't much better, God. And for the disciples and Jesus, of course, they went right from the triumphal entry, and before long, Jesus is flipping tables, and, and a good Friday is looming just days later. And they're looking and saying, this thing that we thought was a victory turned out to apparently be a defeat. We thought we had won. We thought that we'd made it through. We thought that we, we had encountered a, a salvation. And yet things are just as bad as they were before. See, it's important for us to realize a couple of things here. First of all, as you're going through in your life and you find yourself with a sea in front of you and an army behind you and you trust in God, look for those doors to open. Look for him to provide a different way through. Maybe it's not the way that you anticipated. Maybe it's not the way that you thought. Maybe it's not even the way that you wanted. I'm sure the Israelites weren't necessarily like, okay, God, so here's what you're going to do. You're going to part the waters, and we're going to walk through them. That wasn't their idea, I guarantee you. They were probably like, maybe just like make the Pharaoh change his mind. That'd probably be the best way about this. And yet, God found a different way. So perhaps as you find yourself in that difficult situation, know that God will open a door for you. Somehow, some way. He'll see you through it. Because if there's one thing I know about life, it goes on. But the second thing that we should learn, and perhaps even more important than the first, is that just because you encountered a small victory doesn't mean the war is won. Just because there was some tension relieved, just because there was a little bit of stress that you found your way through, doesn't mean that now life is going to be easy. Unfortunately, there are many churches that would tell you that, oh, being a Christian means your life is all set. Oh, no, in this world you will have struggles. Just because you've won the small victory doesn't mean the war has been won. And so for the Israelites, as they were wandering through the desert, they started to grumble. They started to look back and say, where we were before, which is unquestionably bad, right? We can all agree where the Israelites were before the Red Sea was not a good place. None of them were happy there. And yet, that, that, that siren song of looking over your shoulder and saying, well, well, at least the certainty of back there was good enough. Oh, it is a tempting mistress, that idea of certain mediocrity when what you're trying to do is achieve greatness. When you're trying to improve, you're trying to go further, right? You're trying to trust in God that he is guiding you. So that's what the Israelites did. No doubt that's what the disciples were thinking as they were in Jerusalem and there was conflict broiling up time and time again. No doubt that's what they thought on Good Friday, well, at least when we were being driven out of those towns, we were, still had hope. But what they don't realize is that God, God was working in a completely different way than what they anticipated. 
Now, it's important to remember, sometimes in our lives, something looks like a disaster. Something looks like an unmitigated, because for the disciples, that's what Good Friday was, right? They had abased their entire past three years, their entire livelihood, their entire identity around really the hope shared by this one person. And on Good Friday, that hope came crashing down. And it seemed like a complete and total disaster. But even from disaster, new life can grow. Just this week, at the Arboretum here in town, the Houston Arboretum, they had to have a prescribed burn, right? So that they could kill off some of the shrubbery that had grown up so that new plants can break through that soil. Sometimes in life, what you see as a destructive fire is actually making opportunity for new growth. Something that you see as a defeat is a hidden victory. Because let's not lose sight. As the disciples and Jesus are marching into Jerusalem, the the triumphal entry, right? Triumph, victory, yay, let's write a song about it. What were the people crying? They were shouting out Hosanna, which if you've been in church, you know, means God save us. It means Yasha Anna, that's where the words that's come from, God save us, please. That's nice that we added a please on there. They're crying out, God save us. Now, from the perspective, at least corporately, of the Israelites, they were saying that we're we're facing persecution. Now, things aren't as bad as they were in Egypt, but there's certainly uh, ethnic and racial tension between us and the government right now. And that's kind of what they're saying. Like, we want a political leader to speak on our behalf. That's, many believe that's what they were kind of pushing at. Now, that's not to say that those waving those palm branches... Fulfilling Psalm 118, there wasn't also a personal cry of Hosanna. Because for us, that cry of Hosanna is personal. Now, maybe you're thinking, I've never waved a palm in the air and said Hosanna, except outside the context of church. But I know, because we're all broken people living in a broken world, that we've all at some point experienced one of those sleepless nights where we lay there tossing and turning as it seems like all the pressure and worry of the world just haunts us and presses down on us. And we think about all those things that we have to do, all those relationships that we have to fix, all the things that we have said in our lives that have made other people upset, and it all just keeps hitting us and hitting us. And in that moment, our soul groans, Hosanna, save me. Or maybe it's in the morning. You wake up and you're looking at your to-do list and you're thinking, I have no idea how I'm going to get all this done. I have no idea how I have the means to get all this done. And things keep happening and you're saying, Hosanna, God, save me. As you have to come to reconcile with the brokenness of this world and the pain that's happening, maybe in your life, maybe in the lives of the people around you, and we say, Hosanna, God, save us. What is your Hosanna moment? Again, it's not going to be waving a palm frond in the air and shouting it out. More than likely, it's a groan from deep within your heart. A groan that only God can hear. But the good news is that he does hear it. You see, as those people were shouting Hosanna, they may have thought they knew what they wanted, but what they got was so much better. Because what they got is a God who didn't just win the small victory. A God who didn't just relieve the tension. No, see, Jesus came, yes, to save us. To win the war. To win true victory for each and every one of us. He made us so we're no longer slaves to sin. We no longer have to live this life toiling to try and earn approval from God because we've been given it through Jesus Christ who lived the perfect life that we're not living. He won for us the fact that as we toss and turn at night, the things that we worry about are things of this world. And in this world, it's going to fade. We don't have to toss and turn at night worrying about our salvation because it has been assured to us. It has been promised to us. So when we cry out, Hosanna, save me from this situation, we know that one day we'll be set free from this situation. 
One day we all will be together in paradise, free from the struggles of this broken world, free from the pain, free from the sleeplessness. Hosanna, God save us. Through Jesus Christ, he pays the debt of our sin and sets us free. Yeah, maybe we'll transition from Palm Sunday all the way to Good Friday. Maybe things will get worse before they get better. And unfortunately, that's the reality of living in a world full of sin. That's the reality of, of living with sin ourselves, right? Maybe things will get more difficult, but trust this. While Good Friday may be on the horizon, Easter is coming. And it's at Easter that Christ proclaims the victory. It's at Easter that Jesus says, no, no, all those little battles that you've been fighting, no, I, I just won the war. Because that's the triumph of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The triumph and victory that he gives to each and every one of us. That is why Holy Week matters. So from our perspective... Let's, yes, pray for those small battles, but also keep our eyes fixed on the much larger victory, won through Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Now, if we could join together in prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you and thank you for who you are for saving us. Lord, as we cry out, Jose and I pray that you would be, be within us, that you would know the groans of our soul, the groans of our hearts. You would know the condition of our lives that so often we, we are facing so many struggles. And Lord, as you walked on this earth, you saw that, you experienced that, but you then went so much further because you didn't just free us from these struggles. You freed us so that we can know that we have life everlasting waiting for us. We have paradise with you. So Lord, help us to celebrate that. Help us to focus our hearts and minds on that. Help us to live that out and to share that message of hope with anyone who will listen because so many people in this world are struggling in such a real way. In this world, we will have troubles, but take heart for you, Lord, have overcome this world. Remind us of that every single day. And Lord, because we live in this broken world, there are those struggles. There are those pains that we go through. And so we raise them up to you, Lord. We continue to ask, continue to pray for Karen um, and for her family and continue to be with them. We pray for Bill Ford, continued healing after surgery. Lord, we pray for all those who are suffering the effects of coronavirus as we see perhaps a light at the end of the tunnel of this, and yet there will still be ramifications and lasting effects for so long. And so we ask that you would help us to be there to be there in our community, to deal with those who perhaps feel forgotten about. Lord, inspire us in this dark and broken world to share your hope and your light. As there is so much hatred, so much pain, so many people who, who will uh, to, to hurt the people around them, Lord, let us be different. To proclaim love, to help, just as you did, Lord. Inspire us, guide us ever onward. And Lord, because we all have different experiences, different perspectives, different struggles, it'd be impossible for me to raise up all the requests, all the concerns of everybody here in this room. But Lord, as you walked on this earth, you taught us a prayer. And so here now in this place, whether in this room or joining along online, we join with the millions of other Christians professing this very same prayer, the prayers of our Lord, the prayer of our Lord himself. We pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, now would be the time that we would gather up all the offerings, but in the meantime, we have 
these guys, look at this, they're all excited to come on up here and sing a song for you. So they're gonna go ahead and present and then we'll sing the doxology. I'll explain that momentarily. I just want to reiterate, I know I say something similar every week, but when it comes to our offering, this is a way for us as Christians to respond to what God has given us, to respond to the blessings that we have in our lives. Really, it's a statement of trust saying, God, I know that you have blessed me in the past, and so I'm willing to give because I trust that you're going to bless me in the future. And what we do then is the church becomes the steward of those gifts to then help out the community around us. This is for ministry. And so that is why we give. And so I would encourage you, whether it be that box back there, there's also an opportunity to give online. You can text to give, though that wasn't working for me this morning. Um, but there are many different ways to give. And it's ultimately, it's not about you and the church. It's about you and God and your relationship with God. And I just wanna say, if you are a guest with us, uh, I don't wanna pressure you right now to give. You're, oh, this is where they ask me to, to give money. Um, in fact, we give you the opportunity to receive. As you exit out the doors after the service, there's a black table, uh, welcome, written real big on it. There's a, a gift for our first time visitors. It's a black bag, that is our gift to you. With that said, we're gonna continue here in person by singing the doxology. You can join us online. After we finish the doxology, the online feed will cut because we're gonna continue in the sacrament of the altar, which really can only be enjoyed in person. We'd love for you to join us, whether it be uh, next week with Easter or any of our services coming up. We'd love to see you. With that being said, let's stand as we sing the doxology together, singing our thanks to God for what he has given us. <laughs> 